Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, we're talking about a big pattern shakeup across the United States here as we head towards mid to late November. I'm talking about storm track, precipitation, big time temperature changes for the country, kind of a flip. That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. But before we begin, if you like detailed weather forecast breakdowns, much more detailed than you would see on the old TV set, click that old subscribe button down there right below the video, and we're going to get right into it here. So, what we're looking at here is PivotalWeather.com. It is a great, phenomenal website for the weather models. And you can follow along with me if you're into this sort of thing, kind of Bob Ross style. We can paint on the, the old map together here. So what we're looking at is the 500 millibar height anomalies. Now, this is a great tool to use for long-range forecasting because we can examine the patterns and the storms that are circulating around the Earth. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fast. We're going to put this at, at you know, Friday how about Thursday, the how about Friday, the uh, 15th of November here. Now, let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go to the 12th of November real quick. And you're going to see this pattern that's been kind of the norm for the past couple of weeks. There's ridging in the west. So this red height anomaly here is ridging. And it means essentially there's a lot more warm air out here. It's typically calmer conditions. And then there's a lot of troughing in the east. Now, with troughing, you typically get cold weather, cold fronts that kind of come out along and behind it, and then storm systems out ahead of it, very powerful ones, if they're really closed off like this. You see those loops, and see how it's like very closed off, very deep? You typically get storm systems out ahead of it in between the trough and the ridge. So very active pattern for the central and eastern United States, particularly cold weather. Now, as we head towards mid-November, we're going to go back to around now and then fast forward it. Look at this old thing coming on, sneaking on right onto the West Coast. There's a trough here. Now, this was getting, you know, essentially out here. And it was kind of pushing air down to the eastern United States from the Arctic. Well, what's happening now is this trough is moving in. This blocking over here is weakening. And all of this troughing is going to start moving to the east, kind of circulate around in the Arctic. But this troughing out here is going to move into the West in central U.S. because this ridging is moving east. That's going to open the door for potential several troughs in the central and western United States, which is going to cool things down a bit. We're definitely going to get a warm-up from this ridge, but we'll get some a little more shots of cold air, but particularly storm systems. That's the big thing we're going to look for in the central U.S., particularly the Plains, and potentially even the western United States as well. So this is around the 14th. Now, we're going to fast forward this. This is the 16th. There's a couple of waves. I mean, as this ridge moves in, there's, there's a couple of uh, little waves that you can see, and you might get some storm systems around the 16th of uh, November, but nothing really crazy. Now, you see this troughing out here, and this, uh, this troughing right here and ridging out here, this actually might push down a little wave right here, this troughing. This might nudge down just a bit of a wave. There's a mini ridge here. As you head towards the weekend, you can see that moves down into the central United States around Sunday, the 17th. Okay, not too far away. A little activity out in the southwestern United States as well. There's a little mini trough here. There's a mini trough here. There could be a little bit of a, a storm system that tracks up the plains. Meanwhile, tons of ridging out in the western U.S., and it starts to definitely warm up across all of the United States and especially the eastern United States as you're having a much different picture as you head towards the weekend. Now we're going to fast forward this thing towards Monday. And uh, these kind of a similar pattern sets back up where you have a trough in the east and a ridge in the west. But that's not going to last long, not two weeks like this previous pattern did. That'll move to the east on Tuesday. And then some ridging kind of sets in a little bit more zonal flow. You got this trough out here moving into, you know, that's going to give uh, areas in the southeast United States some more activity instead of the northeast. So it'll start lighting up a little bit in the southeast United States. But finally, we get a trough in the western United States, and that's going to deliver some cold and uh, not terribly cold, but uh, cool and stormy conditions for the west and central U.S. as we head towards Wednesday. This moves out Thursday, still central U.S., Meanwhile, it's ridging out in the east, so it's going to be warmer in the east as you head towards Friday the 22nd. And then look at that big wave as we head towards the 25th. This is towards Thanksgiving. There could be a pretty powerful uh, storm system Thanksgiving week somewhere across the central United States. It's been kind of consistent with that. And more troughs continue to drop into the southwestern United States. A very, very positive change for this area as it's been kind of just... Uh, 
either cold in the central U.S. or just warm out in the western U.S. and kind of boring for the most part. So that will uh, occur around uh, late month. This is getting kind of far out there. And then you got some ridging out into the east coast and another decent trough that comes in to the west coast of the United States. Now, the way this pattern looks is towards late month is you got some ridging out there and then you got troughing out here. Would not be surprised to see late month again it kind of flipped back to this old pattern we've had over the past couple of weeks, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Now, let's look at the uh, precipitation. Then what we're going to do is look at the ensembles. Now, how about we look at the, uh, yeah, we'll look at the precipitation, then zoom in here into the United States. We'll go to the national view here. And as you can see, we're going to see some uptick in storms in the central and western U.S., and uh, we'll mark some days on the calendar here. Now, as you can see, uh, we go back in time, you can actually see that storm system exiting the east coast, very cold air behind it. But let's go uh, forward towards the weekend here. There is that little storm system I was talking about in the central, in the southwestern United States. You can definitely see a little uh, storm system for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. That'll move to the east. Uh, you know, pretty much... A little cold front back here. Nothing uh, nothing crazy organized there, but, uh, you know, a little tiny system. Definitely going to pack some rain in it as it looked pretty slow moving in the upper levels. And it, it kind of does look slow moving. So sometimes if you have a little cut off, you know, type of system in the upper levels or not terribly cut off, but just kind of uh, isolated, you're going to get slower moving storm systems. So nice warm front, cold front, going to kind of just sit out there. And it'll be uh, very key to see where this sets up because this sets a little bit farther to the northwest, there could be some pretty big time rains in the Carolinas. And then uh, we'll fast forward this into the weekend. There's that other system I was talking about Saturday and Sunday. Nothing really very disorganized for the most part. Uh, but nonetheless, a little system for the southern plains as we head towards the weekend. Really just rain. I, I don't see anything even severe weather wise with that. And then uh, as we head towards Tuesday, Wednesday, there's actually a system now. This is one with one of the more impressive troughs. As you head towards Tuesday, the 19th, you can see a nice low pressure system now in the plains. With uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, here's your freezing line, and it's definitely warming up. So your freezing line now, you know, your average temperature being freezing in the atmosphere is much farther north. It's actually further south in the west, but for the east half in the central U.S., it's much further north now. And uh, that'll actually push the snow a little bit further north, but it will return the chances for snow for this region as it's been a while since we've had activity in the northern plains. Now, that will continue to move to the east. Meanwhile, that other system kind of blows up that other cutoff. Well, it wasn't really a cutoff, but other little uh, trough that moved to the east. You got another system out, but it's mostly out in the shore. This little uh, system will move to the east, kind of east to west, kind of a progressive pattern. As we head towards Wednesday the 20th, then, uh, you know, as we head towards Thursday the 21st, a more impressive system blows up over the plains, actually gives Kansas some snow. Still a little bit uncertain on all of that, but kind of a linear looking system, you know, with an organized blizzard, you'd like to see that comma head shape appearance with a cutoff low up in the all the way up through the upper levels. This is a little more linear, nice cold front, though, kind of a, a warm front uh, extending out really to the northeast kind of Midwest region with a nice line of rain. Uh, and then as we head towards uh, Saturday, the 23rd, you can see that moves to the east. And that does kind of briefly return that pattern we've been seeing in the east coast and kind of gives them a chance of snow out here. But really uh, with this pattern, it's a lot more progressive and uh, a little bit uh, less cold. So the chances for snow will be a little bit further north and be a little bit faster. Meanwhile, the west coast around Saturday, the 23rd, you got lots of snow out there and uh, rain as well as the western trough starts to move in. And this is the week that I think the western and central U.S. are going to get some activity towards you know, the uh, weekend before Thanksgiving week into Thanksgiving week. It's a little tiny system that pops out into the plains here. That'll have to be watched, but really nothing crazy there. Some moisture out ahead of it. <clears throat> high pressure to the east. So you definitely have to watch that when you get this set up with high pressure to the east. Kind of a high to the northwest. Uh, and then some moisture out ahead of it. You're going to have to watch this as we head towards Monday. And you can see it does blow up as it heads to the northeast uh, and in Canada 
on uh, Tuesday the 26th. Plenty of moisture out ahead of it. So this is something we're definitely going to watch Thanksgiving week if this decides to move any farther to the south, um, especially with those temperature gradients, those warm waters we have out in the east, uh, well, out, on the, out in the Atlantic along the eastern seaboard. They're pretty warm out there, so anytime we can get a low-pressure system to track up the coast, it's definitely something we want to watch with rapid cyclogenesis being a higher threat this winter than usual. Uh, that would be definitely something we want to watch, and we could get a decent snowstorm. But right now, that's kind of progressive and a little bit further north. This pattern is less favorable for that. And then as you head towards Thanksgiving week, this is something we're going to wa want to watch here. This is actually Thanksgiving. You can see a big low-pressure system, lee side low out of the Rockies here, blows up. And it smacks the central plains. You had a nice western trough, a couple of waves now that have brought down enough cold air, the 540 line all the way down into the central and even parts of the southern U.S. And you got plenty of moisture out ahead of these. What's actually going to happen is these previous low pressure systems, if you go back a few days, are going to kind of pull up moisture from the Gulf. The cold fronts aren't overly strong, so that's not going to divert all of the uh, air down to the Gulf and shut off the Gulf. It's it's actually going to kind of get these cold fronts are a little bit further north, and that moisture, each time a low pressure system kind of comes by, it's going to drag up just a little more and a little more moisture, and that can set the stage for a, uh, a decent storm as you head towards uh, Thanksgiving. Now, this is actually far out. We're going to keep an eye on this. This very well could change. What I'm really focusing on is just the general pattern in this video. But nonetheless, you can see a, a, almost a blizzard here as we head towards Thanksgiving for the Northern Plains, maybe even some severe weather out ahead of it. This does look like a severe weather type of uh, look based off just the surface analysis. We'd obviously have to look at instability and stuff, but decent cold front out ahead of it, warm front behind it or ahead of it and uh, you, you really can see just plenty of moisture and wraps all the way around it's much more of a comma head type of appearance so much more of a classic low pressure system so definitely have to watch towards thanksgiving obviously i'll be making some more videos for that now we're gonna also look at temperature anomalies real quick here this is your temperatures above and below zero go back in time here and you obviously see the east is caked with 30 below average and then uh, much above average in the west. But as that ridge moves through, you can actually see the temperatures in response move to the east. And you can see it warms up. This is Monday. We'll go back. And I'll show you that. That was uh, Saturday. Now this is Monday. And you can see really on Monday, it's going to be the first day where these temperatures really moved into the uh, eastern yeah, well, it's central and western United States, but they do push into the eastern United States eventually. Average to slightly below average with much above average here in the western United States. This will push east, as you can see here, as we head towards Tuesday and Wednesday with 10, 15 degrees above average in the central U.S. That cool air finally moves in to the uh, western U.S., southwestern United States, with about 5 to 15 degrees below average in some areas, especially in the Rockies. Meanwhile, the east now, this is on Thursday, finally begins to warm up as we get that ridging. So we head towards Friday and Saturday. Sunday, you know, you can see multiple waves and you, with uh, those little troughs that we see, those little low pressure systems with a progressive pattern like this, you're going to see lots of temperature swings. But because the troughs aren't terribly uh, high in amplitude, they're kind of little small, little ordeals, you're going to get small kind of subtle temperature changes and lots of them throughout the United States. So I think you're going to see temperatures that go above, below, above, below, but not terribly above or below as we head towards the next couple of weeks through late November. But as we head towards uh, Thanksgiving week, there's much more impressive trough, and that could deliver a better shot of cold air to the central and eastern United States. Temperature-wise, we'll look at those real quick. And then, as you know, as you get towards uh, the weekend, not too far from now here, Saturday, Sunday, that cold air finally moves to the east. We'll go to Monday here, and you can see temperatures Monday finally in the 50s and 60s for parts of the uh, – Central and Southern United States, obviously Southwestern United States, still in the 70s, and uh, 40s return to the Northeast. As we head towards uh, Thursday here, we'll go a couple more days. You can see uh, finally 40s in the Southeast, 50s, 60s, 70s in the Southern U.S. Texas, pretty warm. But uh, definitely cooling down in the uh, Western United States with 20s, 30s, teens in some areas. And you can see that cold front moving through, but notice it doesn't really all really hit the Gulf all that much. 
and that's going to help keep moisture coming up as we head towards Thanksgiving week. And we'll look at Thanksgiving here, and you can see that powerful low pressure system. You can see those wind barbs spiraling into this thing. Temp you know, tight pressure gradient, high pressure out here, high pressure out here, cold blast behind it, very warm out ahead of it, nice uh, easterly flow, very uh, impressive setup here for potential powerful storm system as we head towards Thanksgiving. But again, we're gonna have to watch this. This will change quite a bit. So that would be that. Then we'll look at uh, precipitation. How about that for the next uh, several uh, weeks or several days here? And uh, we'll go over the moisture, look at the uh, precipitation amounts. I'll try that again. I think total QPF will be uh, what we want to look at here. And uh, we'll just fast forward this all the way through Thanksgiving. And you can see, now this is obviously something, this is kind of extra credit stuff, you know, towards the end of the video here. This is going to change quite a bit. First half is the most important with the patterns. But you can see the western U.S., look at that, 4 to 10 inches in some areas, especially in the mountains. Obviously, a lot of that's going to be snow. So definitely with this type of pattern, you're going to get an uptick in snowfall for the Rockies and for the skiers, especially as you head towards Montana. Then obviously in the central United States, this pattern is a lot more ripe. Southern U.S., central U.S., much more ripe for above normal precipitation and you got about one to three inches in some areas and then the southeastern united states uh with this pattern there's a couple of uh little uh low pressure systems that move through the southeastern united states and deliver a good uh, two to four inches in some areas in the south south uh, eastern united states so really the areas you want to keep your eye on here are going to be the northwestern kind of throughout the i would say rockies area the central United States out through the Midwest, and then the southeast to the far southeastern United States with this pattern. And it's been pretty consistent with uh, these troughs moving into the western and central U.S. So I would say the probability for an uptick in activity is much higher for this region right here than it was a couple weeks ago with this pattern much more ripe one other thing we'll look at before we wrap it up is the gefs and we'll look at the upper levels again i'm actually kind of curious to see how consistent this has been because uh yeah we'll look at the gfs and then we'll look at the cfs because that has multiple runs and you can definitely see this is the 15th 16th 17th 18th 19th 20th 30th actually 21st 22nd 23rd yeah the pattern definitely changes up towards uh thanksgiving and uh, the gfs is just several different runs it's, it's good for confidence it definitely changes up for the central and eastern or western united states another thing we can look at is the cfs and we can do a six run tle which is the past six runs so it's averaging six runs out now the cfs is a warm bias after about boy it just seems like after seven days this thing has a big time warm bias um, but you know, this is the, oh, this is actually the 29th already. So let's go to the 17th, 18th, 19th. And you can see towards the 20th, there's a Western trough and an Eastern bridge 21st, 22nd kind of just stays out there as we head towards Monday, the 25th, it starts to move to the East, but more troughing as we head towards Wednesday, whoops, as we head towards Wednesday, and then uh, Thursday, you know, you see a trough right in the central U.S. So the past six runs of the CFS are even indicating troughing in the central U.S. and, and western U.S. before then. So I'd say there's very high confidence. And, you know, based off the past couple of days, I've been keeping an eye on this at an increase in activity, particularly for this region right here. And then uh, a below average temperatures will start to occur for much, really much of this area right here as we head towards, you know, the 20th through about the 30th or so. And then potentially as we head towards late month and early December, we'll see another pattern change around then. So that is gonna wrap up this video. I just wanted to update you guys on this video. If you like these daily videos, click that subscribe button. Also, I've got more winter forecast videos coming out on how I put my winter forecast together. If you haven't seen that, check out the winter forecast. I'll link it up up in the upper right-hand corner. Again, I'll have much more detailed forecasts on how I put this together coming over Coming out over the next couple of weeks, little five to ten minute videos, each focusing on an area of the ocean or a feature that I use to forecast my uh, winter forecast for 2019-2020. So hit that thumbs up button, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment below and we'll see you soon.